The main goal of this PC is to maximize price performance while delivering an entry-level 1440p gaming experience. I also wanted to have a focus on getting high frame rates in esports titles, which means I can't cheap out on the processor. With that in mind, I think I built something that fits both of those requirements. Let's get into some testing. Starting off with the platform, let's be honest. If you're building a sub $800 PC and want to get great price performance, you're going to be building with AM4. Not only does it have that, but it also has a great upgrade path, which will allow you to keep up with pretty much any modern graphics card. Getting onto this platform is pretty simple. Picking up this B450M1 from ASRock and slotting in any choice of four generations of processors and you're off to the race. This specific board is pretty basic, only coming with support for PCIe Gen 3, but that shouldn't be a bottleneck for anything I've picked out today. For the processor at hand, like I said, I wanted something that would excel at esports gaming. For that, I really only had one choice when it came to the budget end, and that's the R5 5600. This six core CPU delivers everything Zen 3 had to offer, matching pretty much any other processor in the lineup in terms of single core performance while coming in at a very attractive $116. Pairing this with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM from Team Group and you'll be able to handle anything up to a 4070 Ti depending on the resolution. Unfortunately, that's an $800 graphics card. Instead, I've opted for what I deem to be the best price performance $300 graphics card, the RX 6750 XT. While this may be a last gen card, it still beats out anything new in its price bracket, coming with 12 gigabytes of VRAM and 2560 stream processors, this beast of a card gives great 1440p gaming performance on any newer title. The only real downside to it is that power consumption might be a little high when compared to current generation, but thankfully I picked out this 600 watt one from Thermaltake, which will cover our basis and even allow for a little overclocking if you're into that kind of thing. The case I picked out today is one that I've grown to really like. The DIY PC ARGB Q3.V2 Dash B may not have a nice name, but the look of it is really nice and the price is even nicer. Coming in at just $60, you'll get support for up to nine fans in your fish tank with three already coming installed. Plenty of room for this massive graphics card I picked out and it doesn't feel like a scrapped metal box that some budget cases end up being. Also, the fans are RGB. So that's a plus. For the last component here, let's talk about storage. My personal belief is that you should be aiming for one terabyte of space in any modern gaming PC, which is what I've done today. Slapping in this Gen 3 drive from Faxiana will give you that price today a sweet spot, but if you're going to be using this every day and want better performance, especially with sustained read and write speeds, I recommend picking up something like the 970 Evo Plus from Samsung. Personally, I think the drive I picked out is more than enough for just a gaming PC. Now let's move over to the performance of the system. Starting with eSports, title. The R5 5600 is a great entry level CPU for this and taking a look at Counter Strike 2, getting over 250 FPS on average with 1% lows above 100 will make for a smooth experience in this title. Similarly in Overwatch 2, apparently every game is a sequel now, we were nearing that 300 FPS on average with 1% lows at 200. You can still further improve these titles with competitive settings, but this is more of a worst case scenario if you're looking to play at default settings. Still a very good showing for this gaming PC and I don't expect it to hold you back in any other esports title. Moving over to AAA titles, at high settings, Cyberpunk did manage to hit that 60 FPS sweet spot on average, while in Starfield we were just below it. If you're looking to improve performance in these two specific titles, I would suggest using XSS on the balance preset, which will improve performance by up to 20%. As for the rest of the games I tested, yeah, the system is going to be able to run anything you throw at it without having to reduce the settings below high. And thankfully for that 12GB VRAM buffer, you won't have to worry about texture dropping in and out in games like Halo and Hawk Hogwarts Legacy. Now just a quick overview for the creator side of things, you guys obviously wanted this. Blender Classroom was able to be rendered in just 1 minute and 16 seconds, not too bad. And then taking a look at our scores for both Premiere Pro and Photoshop, and yeah, it's not that high. This is mainly due to the RX 6750 XT holding the system back, and maybe the 16GB of RAM. If you're looking for an alternative graphics cards around the same price point, I'd have to recommend the A770. It comes in at the same price as the 6750 XT, it's optimized for Adobe Pro products and has 4 gigabytes more of VRAM. Pretty good deal, just not the best for gaming due to driver optimizations. I've got to say the overall value and look of this PC has impressed me. I'm not that known for my aesthetics builds, I mean I basically just throw anything in a box, but the DIY PC case that was featured today was such a great deal and didn't sacrifice on looks. And considering basically everything else in the system was optimized for price performance, I think it was not too bad for a near $700 gaming PC.